ग्रोथ इवन फर्दर टूगेदर बंधन बैंक आपका भला सबकी भलाई दिस इज टीवी एटीन एंड यूर वॉचिंग सी एन बी सी टीवी एटीन प्रेजेंटेड बाय ध्रुवा एडवाइजर्स Make or break, do or die. These are the phrases you often hear in the build-up to every union budget. But with growth slowing down to its lowest level in over six years, it is safe to say the finance minister and the government have their tasks cut out. So, what does India Inc. expect from the finance minister come this Saturday? Over the next 60 minutes, we take you through an exclusive poll conducted among CEOs by CNBC TV 18 and Druva Advisors. Now, before we bring you the findings, here's a quick look of the methodology. A hundred and 30 CEOs across a wide variety of sectors were polled and they were polled between the 15th of January to the 23rd of January. Now the survey was done through an online link and the respondents will remain anonymous. That is the methodology of the Dhruva CNBC TV 18 poll. But let's go to the very first question. We asked What is the realistic GDP growth target for this financial year? Let's look at the numbers. 81%. The majority by a vast margin believe that GDP will be below 6%. Now remember, the Reserve Bank of India has forecast 5%. The IMF has a forecast of 4.8%. Now linked to that is the question, what is causing this slowdown? Take a look at what the survey shows up. Bad loans and slower credit growth, 42% believe that is responsible for the slowdown. slow down in consumption 42% a delay in the capex cycle about 12% in the weak global economy uh, about 5% of ceos blame the slow down in the economy to that so what should be the major macro theme of budget 2020 an overwhelming majority that 71% believe that the government must encourage infrastructure spending to be the big budget theme so that's very very clear 71% believe infrastructure spending boosting exports 28% fiscal school discipline 19% and promoting social spending about 18%. Next we asked what should be the key policy thrust. A majority of 29% want land and labor reforms to get top billing. 22% expect monetary easing and that to continue. 19% want measures for the real estate sector. 17% want privatization and disinvestment to be the key theme and the key policy thrust areas. When asked to rate the government's efforts on improving the ease of doing business on a scale of 1 to 10 41% have given a rating of between 5 to 7 35% have given a rating of under 5% and 23% have given a rating of above so that's the story as far as ease of doing business is concerned Now to take us through these findings and what we can expect from budget 2020, uh, joining us now is Dinesh Kanabar, the CEO of Dhruva Advisors LLP, Sangeeta Reddy, the President of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industries of FICCI, also the Joint Managing Director of Apollo Hospitals, Vikram Kirloskar, the President of the Confederation of Indian Industry, also the Vice Chairman of Toyota Kirloskar Motor, Ashok Badwa, the Group CEO of Ambit, and Praveen Kadle, the Chairman of Tata Capital. Gentlemen and uh, Sangeeta, many thanks for joining us here on the Budget Countdown CEO poll uh, that we've done. Now, Mr. Kanabar, since uh, Dhruva has done the poll, let me go to you very quickly. Every year, as I pointed out, there is a long list of uh, uh, demands that industry makes of the government. But this time around, the expectation is that with the Prime Minister himself conducting pre-budget consultations, supervising the meetings, that this could be a budget that could be a reset moment for the Indian economy. What is the expectation that you gathered from the poll? So as you look at the poll, uh, and it's very interesting, uh, we have been doing this uh, every year, but the response this year was very spontaneous. People just came back and maybe this is the largest ever population that we have seen responding. Came back to say that this is the point of time where the economy needs to be revived. This is a point of time where, as you pointed out earlier, the government needs to focus on some of those sectors where spending is going to help. where job creation is going to help so if you look at for example when people come back and respond to say that infrastructure is the need of the hour they are also going back to say this yeah. is a sector which creates lots of jobs this is a sector mm. where money flows into the economy mm. and that needs to happen uh the uh, will of course at a later point of time talk about taxes and the expectations there but overall people are yes. expecting the government to be 
very very much focus on those sectors which will boost consumption which will put money back in the system which will ensure expansion of credit and which will create jobs yeah. those yeah. are the emerging themes and rightly so and you're absolutely right because if we look at uh, the macro theme for the budget encouraging infrastructure spending of course 71 percent fiscal discipline just 19 percent believe that fiscal discipline is likely to be the big macro theme for the budget you know we had done a dipstick survey of our own uh, in davos when i was recently there and every ceo that we polled said that this is time for fiscal expansion and the government must go in for expansion to stimulate the economy and that's what this poll is also showing up uh, let's Let's go straight to taxes because that is what is going to be the focus uh, uh, for a lot of people uh, on this panel and of course outside of it. Ashok Wadwa, let me come to you. Uh, we asked what you believe will be the most important direct tax theme. 50% believe personal tax reforms will be the big theme. Implementation of the direct taxes code, 24% believe that to be the big theme. Dispute resolution, 21%. Taxation of the digital economy, about 5%. I'll come to dividend distribution tax and LTCG in just a second. But what is your expectation, Ashok, as far as direct taxes are concerned? You know, Shirin, um, if you look at our GDP construct, 75% of our GDP is uh, contributed through the consumption cycle and the consumption economy. And 25% of our GDP is really, uh, you know, contributed through the investment and the, and the CapEx cycle. Um, obviously, uh, with focus on GDP, with focus on trying to revive the economy, uh, we have to focus mm. on whatever supports consumption at this point of time. And I would argue there are two elements amongst the points that you, you made. One is, can we create a broader uh, tax base? Can we, can we increase the exemption limits yeah. at the lower and the middle level to, mm. a, to, a, to a more broader mm. extent? Uh, can we provide more disposable income which encourages people to spend? Remember, it's not just uh, urban consumption. This time we have seen rural consumption, yeah. semi-urban consumption drop to a large extent, which is why, as I said, my focus is on the yeah. larger base versus at the upper end of, of, the, of the pyramid. Mm. The other one which, of course, helps consumption okay. uh, is, is GST. Any rationalization of GST mm. that can encourage consumption would go a long way. Having said that, I fully realize yeah. that government's own yeah. budget on GST collection is far behind yes. its original estimates yes. and therefore yes. government may have limited flexibility in, the, in that area. Yes, and, and, and GST will not be dealt with in the budget. It will be dealt outside the budget, and I'll address the GST issues in just a second. But Ashok, before I get the others in, uh, very quickly, I want to get uh, something that the equity markets are going to be watching out for very, very closely. Your take on dividend distribution tax and the LTCG. Now, what the poll says is 27% believe that there will be no cut in the dividend distribution tax. 27% believe that the cut will be an effective rate to 15%. 26% believe scrap and impose a tax on shareholders. And 20% believe that the cut the effective rate to 5 to 7%. What do you expect on the DDT, Ashok? You know, I think we need to start with the background that is the government willing to completely compromise on fiscal prudence or is the government going to stick to its fiscal, mm. fiscal prudence norm? Because remember, we are going into an year where the tax collections have been significantly below the estimate. So the government has very little elbow room to yes. try and provide tax, tax concessions in this yeah. budget. Mm. Having said that, mm. my own view is that mm. if, the, if the dividend distribution tax is, is removed, and, and we're hearing a lot about that on the grounds that it yeah. is double taxation, I would argue that yeah. it will naturally result yeah. in higher tax of dividend in income in the hands of the taxpayers. You can't have it mm. both ways. You can't have a scenario where you remove dividend sure. distribution tax and you don't tax it in the hands of the taxpayers. So one of the two will happen. If dividend distribution tax mm. goes, then you're likely mm. to see a, a tax in the hands of the taxpayers. As far as long-term capital gains tax is concerned, yes. it is possible that the government will extend the period from 12 months to 24 months or even 36 mm. months. I mean, for a long time, the yeah. government has said yeah. that our approach and objective is to encourage long-term investment. And if yeah. your approach is to encourage long-term investment, right. then you must provide a tax concession for, a beyond, for holdings beyond a longish yeah. period of time. So, so, so taking the period right. to three years and right. then providing an exemption is a possibility. And I think it will be consistent with the government's stated objective.
you're absolutely right and uh, you know and this is what we've been reporting as well that capital creation is likely to be a big theme of budget 2020 and remember the prime minister when he went to new york he did say very categorically that india will move towards equity taxation that will be on par with what uh, are the global norms uh, mr kanabar very quickly expectation on taxes you know, uh, there was a point which uh, Ashok was making. Uh, I, I don't think anybody expects really that if dividend distribution tax is done away with, there won't be any taxation at all. Uh, on the contrary, I might believe that if yeah. dividend distribution tax goes away and the taxation moves to the tax in the hands of the recipient, then the government might actually end up getting far mm. more taxes because individuals who are high mm. income earners will end up paying taxes at 43% yeah. versus 20% which the company would pay. However, that will leave a lot more disposable income in the hands of the companies and that will spur mm. consumption and growth mm. or investment and growth. The capex cycle will revive, which is something which is very, very critical. Uh, I think uh, if that does happen and, and you mentioned about the prime minister's speech in New York. I was also uh, uh, watching uh, yes. the finance minister on the floor of the parliament make a categorical statement to say yes. that uh, dividend distribution tax is a regressive tax which has been thrust on her by the mm. earlier governments and she is determined mm. to remove it. So uh, obviously that was a signal if at all one needed one that something is going to happen on that score. Uh, the question will be that we have Indian investors and we have foreign investors. There are old investments from Mauritius, mm. Singapore, etc., where there are very low uh, dividend yeah. taxes. And what will happen to that? Uh, uh, remember that the whole treaty framework has undergone a change. There's an MLI and all of that stuff happening. So what will happen to that will be very interesting. Sure. Sure. And then finally, if I make a point uh, where there are investment holding companies, yes. how are you giving exemption at multiple yeah. distribution is going to be an interesting space. Uh, just one last comment, Shirin. Uh, while yes, the poll sir. does suggest yeah. uh, uh, that people are expecting 43% plus people are expecting reform on uh, personal tax, I think there is more a statement of hope yeah. than what I really see happening in the budget. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, it may well end up being a statement of hope, sir. Uh, at least uh, at, as, as of today, the indication that we're getting is that uh, given the limited fiscal space that the government enjoys and the choices that they will have to make, perhaps any major change as far as personal income tax is concerned is less of a priority uh, as opposed to spending on infrastructure, social sector schemes and so on and so forth. So we'll have to see what the budget finally unveils. But let me get a sense of business confidence and what the uh, business expects now from the budget and I'll set it in the context of what our poll shows up. The key challenges you foresee for your business, that is the question that we asked. 57% believe weak demand is the biggest challenge. 39% believe government policies including GST, Ashok Wadhva was alluding to that. 29% the next NPA wave and the lack of credit. 18% believe interest rates and monetary policy. 15% say lack of skilled manpower. 14% believe increase in input costs, 12% say it's growing protectionism, and 10% believe a weakening rupee. But right on top, 57% believe weak demand is the key challenge that they foresee for their business. Vikram Kirloskar, president of CII, if that is in fact what the poll shows, uh, what is the big ask then from budget 2020? Give me the top three specifics that you hope for. You know, uh, the auto industry, I'm part of that, and I, I normally shouldn't talk only about the auto industry, but it has certainly taken a big hit over the last 12 or 18 months almost. Last few months have been especially bad. But to build up confidence, I think uh, business in the auto industry has started picking up. Okay, let's leave it aside. Uh, my feeling on auto on, on uh, demand and I may be right or wrong, I'm not an economist, is that over the last two, three years, inflation has been remarkably low than ever before. And when I see salary increases in the last couple of years, in, at least in Bangalore and around, uh, they have been much less than they used to be two, three years ago. That coupled with a higher, uh, uh, a more difficult know your customer kind of requirements with NBFC when you're doing spending for a car or any other thing, is making it more difficult to take a decision on buying a big item, uh, uh, item, uh, refrigerator, car, air conditioner, okay. whatever you have. 
and and that is also hmm. Uh, hmm. causing the demand to come down so spending i think one is hmm. confidence building and i think government spending increase infrastructure spending will increase confidence in the yeah. consumer right now people okay. i think are scared to mm -hmm. some extent saying how will i finance my repayments that's that's one critical issue and right. all the bad stories about the mm -hmm. npas and all the scandals that keep coming in i don't think it helps yeah. with confidence yeah. building either yeah okay so confidence building measures and uh, uh, the big one being infrastructure spending so the government really trying to pump prime the economy by spending and that's what's happened so far uh, you hope that that will continue sangeeta reddy let me come to you we also asked uh, ceos what the key drivers will be that could positively impact their business uh, to the point that's been made on the panel the consensus infra spending and urbanization 52% large majority believe that should be the theme digital transformation 31% low interest rates consumer finance growth increasing in rural demand the government's make in india thrust uh, those are some of the drivers that ceos believe will positively impact their business sangeeta reddy uh, what could be the disruptive ideas that you would like to see in budget 2020 to positively impact business So Shreen obviously we need to make multiple interventions it's not just one big silver bullet here and i think the first one is what we have been saying everyone at fiki including the economists and all the senior leaders here did analyze and the single point that we're saying is put more money into consumers hands consumer spending is the single biggest most important thing to bring back confidence Mm. uh let manufacturing start producing mm. again and to uh, to let go of the the unsold inventory of houses in this country is at the highest ever 12 to 15 mm. lakh units of homes are unsold so consumer spending yeah. consumer confidence yeah. is i think the single biggest one for that you need mm. to pump prime the economy by an influx of cash so to say this everybody would naturally mm. ask where will this money come from and i think we should boldly go out there and say yeah. we do not mind a slight expansion of the fiscal deficit the government must raise 1.5 to 2 lakh crores push that into the economy whether it's in pending payments or putting money into the hands of the consumer that will kind of bring back the economy yeah. uh, and the growth rates so this is i think the single big thing besides that in terms of innovation uh, looking at science innovation it the future growth and convergence yeah. Yeah. i think uh, a strategic boost mm. to the uh, the industries or the sectors of the future to reposition india on that mm. uh, you know that mm. good growth path is the second one uh, the third yeah. i think you you did mention rural and i think that's a very important thing we need significant comprehensive yeah. replanning of the agri sector so output must increase and agri here i want yeah. to make a special point it includes dairy sure. and livestock and then coming back you recently mentioned Absolutely. davos i think you know in davos they spoke about ecg <laughs> so economy for global good so or for the common good i think so if you talk about that imagine yes. if we had a dream that every every indian child should drink one glass of milk a day and worked backwards towards boosting yeah. the dairy industry so i think that combination of mm. the uh, the social sector and the industry working to boost the economy can actually become the big new yeah. idea for the future Uh, it will certainly be uh, one of the growth drivers but let me get uh, Praveen Kadle in on the conversation two of the constraints uh, that the poll has shown up is of course what has happened with the credit collapse uh, specifically what happened with NBFCs and the point that was being made by Sangeeta Reddy on real estate now the expectation is that perhaps budget 2020 could unveil some disruptive ideas to address these two sectors there's been a lot of talk around uh, the possibility of a tarp like mechanism uh, to address the nbfc space we don't know if that is under consideration or not but what is your realistic expectation mr kadle on how the government could unlock these sectors which have so far remained shackled and held back the economy you're right actually the problem is in the availability of credit in the market the last 2 3 years have seen a significant uh, npa accumulation even after the ibc structure has been put in place the npas are still at around 9 uh, and 1/2 lakh crores on the balance sheets of the banks mm. which is almost about 
NPAs are around 9.2 percent of the balance sheets of the banks. So there's a big amount which is uh, locked yeah. there in the form of NPA and something like what you mentioned, what U.S. government did after the uh, subprime crisis. Mm. If the bad bank versus good bank kind of a created, it's the right time to do that, whether it is for NBFCs yeah. or for the banks. If you can create a good bank mm. by taking away the bad bank, something like what we just read uh, in yesterday's uh, or today's announcement about Air India sale where they want to take away the yeah, uh, yeah. debt from the Air India balance sheet into the government uh, balance sheet. Something mm. similar to that, mm. if it can be done, it will really solve the problem. Mm. You, I think that should be done very quickly. You also talked about the real estate, mm. the uh, eight cities which are the bigger yeah. cities where the uh, real estate demand especially for the residential properties is very high. We have about eight lakh mm. Uh, mm. residential units uh, which are unsold and uh, that sorry eight lakh crores which are yeah. unsold and the units which are sold unsold today almost amount to about four years of unsold, uns unsold inventory of uh, real estate. Yeah. So that's another big problem. Yeah. So that's another area where government can do something in terms of uh, releasing this unsold inventory into some kind of an active mechanism. The government has announced some kind of a real mm -hmm. estate uh, uh, scheme for, yeah. but Fun. that's something which needs to be really yeah. activated very quickly. I think these two things, uh, one is the yes. uh, good bank versus bad bank and you can also create the same yeah. similar kind of a structure for real estate. That will really help the problem, solve the problem. Uh, Ashok Wadwa, you believe that will help solve the problem. Ashok, uh, let's let's pick up on on the uh, credit problem that we are faced with. Several measures have already been undertaken by the government. What do you believe could be the disruptive idea, if uh, any at all? The expectation is that perhaps there could be uh, some big ticket bold decision that the government will take. You know, I think honestly, it doesn't need a bold decision. It actually needs a simple resolution, in mm. my opinion. Uh, you know, I think okay. we have liquidity in the system. I think today, it's not as if at least some banks don't have enough money to lend to those who need it. And honestly, we don't even need a reduction in interest rates. If money was made available mm. to those who need that money at this point of time, and I'm not even talking about weak NBFCs yeah. and weak financial institutions. If healthy NBFCs and healthy financial mm. institutions with where, where you know you can be comfortable with mm. your underwriting are made available liquidity that yeah. is otherwise sitting with the reserve bank of india so I think what's what's holding it back then what's holding it back ashok because if if there is uh, you know clearly we've heard from the rbi governor as well as bank saying liquidity is not an issue anymore then what's holding back the lending i think the whole sentiment at this point of time is one of caution and over caution and holding back the narrative needs to change mm. We need to bring in an environment mm. where people feel positive, motivated and encouraged to mm. continue to do business, where mm. banks feel that they are not mm. under investigation to mm. lend should they decide to lend. Yeah. Uh, we, need to, we need to make yeah. a, a very clear distinction between fraud and failure. Mm. And, and we, need to, we need to tell yeah. our lending institutions that failure is an acceptable mm. proposition so long as there was appropriate amount of diligence that yeah. was done upfront while lending to a particular institution. Right. Right. I think if you change that sentiment yeah. and encourage... But, but Ashok... Yes. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, well, you know, just just on that point, there have been some measures that have been taken by the government. In fact, uh, uh, you know, last week we had the Ministry of Corporate Affairs put out this, uh, 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 set up this committee that will sort of act as a buffer between bankers and investigative agencies. That has been followed through even today. Uh, the government saying that not not every loan above 50 crore rupees necessarily has to go through an audit and so on and so forth, which was that circular of 2015. Do you believe this is going to be enough for now? to get the engines to move again, to get the credit engines to move again? You know, I, th I think some of the changes that the government has announced and in particular the emphasis that the Prime Minister has made about going out and doing business in a, in a, in a more secure manner, mm. I think you can already see some positive impact over the last two, four, six mm. weeks. I mean, I can tell you I'm working on a transaction where, you know, a State Bank of India is okay. lending 
to this uh, developer for the last mile completion and the urgency with which uh, you know yes. that 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 money is being released so that there is visible demonstration mm. Of of the action being implemented, yeah. I think we need to see a few more right. of those actions right. being implemented. And as those mm. actions get implemented, okay. and bankers feel more secure to lend out, it's my strong belief that this is not a liquidity issue. This is yeah. a, a, a sentiment issue. This is an yeah. issue about I have the money. Uh, am I secure? Issue. Yeah. Am I secure yeah. leaving it with Reserve Bank? Yeah. At a low rate of interest, or am I secure giving it out to somebody who really needs okay. it and who will contribute to the growth engine after that? But specifically, uh, Dinesh Kanavar, on the real estate sector, because as Ashok was pointing out, and Mr. Kadri also alluded to that, uh, you know, the government has tried to address the problem of under construction housing that was stuck for want of uh, uh, cash by this last mile uh, fund that has been set up. But what about unsold inventory by way of tax breaks or other sweeteners? How does the government get the unsold inventory off the market? So uh, let, let's talk about real estate and you know uh, the point which uh, uh, Kadle made and what uh, Ashok made. Let me just marry it and, and, and let, let's look at this more holistically. So when you look at the real estate sector, the one thing which you find is that an under construction property, if it is sold, attracts GST. And therefore, people wait mm. if they have to avoid the GST outgo for a property to get completed. That's one. Mm. Second is the uncertainty as to whether a project will get completed or not. Third, a typical situation in a real estate is that uh, a developer puts in say about 15% uh, equity, borrows about 35%, expects mm. the sale to be happening while the construction is on to realize that money and to complete the project. With the slackening of the demand, mm. the money has been put in by the developer, the money has been borrowed, but there are no further funds available and therefore the project got gets stalled. Yeah. Now, you are talking about the government initiative mm. on last mile, but here is the challenge. The challenge is yeah. that if there is a stress and a loan is declared by as an NPA, you cannot refinance it, yeah. you cannot further finance it, you can't go mm. to somebody else to substitute that. Mm. Now, that is what is creating a big problem. Mm. Ashok alluded earlier that, for example, okay. a business failure is something which we are not used to accepting. The question is that mm. if there is a project which is stalled, and if you look around in, a, in any large mm. city, there are dozens of them stalled. If mm. those projects are provided funds and completed, you would see a definite revival of the whole sector. Yeah. That's what is not happening today. So two parts. One right. is the GST and okay. really doing away with this anomaly of completed versus ongoing project. And second, this yeah. lack of yeah. initiative or, uh, or a disincentive that you cannot fund a project once something is declared as an NPA. Okay, oh, all right, uh, that's specific to uh, real estate, but I want to get Sangeeta Reddy and Vikram Kirloskar in on the other questions that we raised. Uh, uh, and I'll address the big decision that was taken ahead of the budget. In fact, it seemed like that was a, a day of the mini budget virtually, and it came after we had already seen the interim budget uh, 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 being presented, and that was the corporate tax cut. Uh, big cut being announced by the government. What do you see the biggest impact of the corporate tax cuts? 32% believe may not result in any visible change. 27% believe that they may improve global competitiveness. 24% believe manufacturing capex boost. And 17% believe it will promote foreign investment. Vikram Kirloskar, in light of the corporate tax reduction that has already come in before the budget, uh, you know, A, how has that been utilized? And what do you see as the full impact of that with the passage of time? No, look, I believe that the corporate tax reduction will certainly help in bringing in projects which may not have had come, which may not have come to India earlier. If we are now more competitive or as competitive mm -hmm. as other countries in Southeast Asia. We talk about you know people moving out of China, but we want them in India, and they're going to Vietnam. I think this is a this is one of the factors that will certainly help in moving investments into India which would have gone somewhere else. This is one area. But one general thing I want to talk, you know, you talk about investment itself. Mm. If you look at uh, most yeah. industries last few years or last 10 years, we have been planning yeah. our investments based on an expectation of 7%, 8% growth rate. 
okay, and suddenly you end up with a 5% mm. growth rate for a year or a declining growth rate. You end mm. up with excess mm. capacity. No one in his right sense is going to yeah. invest when he has excess capacity. You want to use your sure. capacity first. Sure. See, my, my understanding or my mm. uh, sort of uh, understanding of the economy and the situation we are going through is we are going through a cleaning up structural change. We have started identifying NPAs mm. with the banks. We have started identifying uh, uh, areas where money is stuck. Uh, I think perhaps a lot of regulation yeah. is getting removed and regulation leads to speculative yeah. spending. So uh, whatever speculative mm. spending that was done based on regulation may be an NPA right now. So mm. we are getting out of that. Finally, the market mm. has to buy what you are going to make. And I think that is starting to happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is key. Uh, the, the resolution which is happening with bankrupt companies, that is a big thing. GST is a big thing. Yeah. Some people don't yeah. like the GST. Me, yeah. for, uh, for large industry, it has been very, very useful. I think uh, people who have not been yeah. in the tax paying uh, uh, area before and now have to pay tax are having difficulty right. understanding the whole system. Uh, that is one thing. So I think there yeah. have been a lot of these gigantic changes which are perhaps taking us mm. to a, a global economy. We, in this kind of a system, we have yeah. to work with greater corporate governance and ethics and build a, a closer trust yeah. between government and society, uh, and, uh, sorry, government and industry, and society and industry. And I think that's, that's the kind of direction Absolutely. we have to set out in, uh, uh, along with the help from the government. Uh, capital, I, I keep uh, yes. requesting the government saying, make equity more competitive or more attractive. We cannot build the country yeah. on debt. Yeah. Building the country on debt is resulting in all this yes. NP NPAs with the banks. If it was equity-based investment, it's someone's risk. And if it's his money being put inside, he will be less speculative than, than with sure. the bank's money. I think I think so. these changes have yes, to be and that made. Uh, as, that is and, that is something get the that is something that many many consumer. have raised get the confidence back you know since you since you raised the issue about trust and you also raised the issue about cleaning up sangeeta reddy let me ask you this because we polled and asked ceos uh, for their take on perceived tax terrorism now 37% say that they have seen increased tax harassment 37% also say that there is political will that is in place but implementation is lacking 18% uh, don't think that it's going to be completely eliminated. 9% believe there has been a considerable abatement. Uh, so your take on uh, tax related issues and what your expectation would be outside of dispute resolution and so on and so forth from the budget. So clearly, Shireen, I think uh, the, the earlier point which was made on consumer sentiment is very critical so I want to very quickly go back to a single line on that for the real estate and the housing it's not only important to complete the project but for consumers to have the cash to buy these so if there is any concept mm. of subversion of interest rate I would even say to be bold enough to front end some of that subversion so that we can get this inventory moving. Okay. Now coming back to your other points, mm. I think one of the big things is the appreciation of the fact that there's a difference between a fraud and a failure and taking that point one step further mm. to reintroduce the concept of a limited liability company. Because I think promoters are beginning to feel mm. that bankers, because of the other problems they have on NPAs, are not just looking at the company that's in trouble, okay. but are looking at, you know, the entire group. So the concept of limited liability companies has to come back to bring in promoter confidence and to ensure that they are investing. Now, you asked a very pertinent question on corporate okay. tax. I think the corporate tax was a, definitely a very welcome step. And uh, uh, it will mm. bring in, it will overall improve the competitiveness of Indian industry. It will bring in other FTI. But it's mm. kind of a medium term step. Boy, we need things for the immediate, mm. which is again, like we said earlier, we need consumption. For consumption, we need cash in individuals' hands. And therefore, whether yeah. it's rural spending yeah. or it's subversion of interest, those are the critical aspects. The last point on this context I want to make is yeah. really the uh, businesses look for predictability. And predictability is not just in projections yes. of growth rates, but also in terms of regulation. 
So over-regulation or prediction mm. of a regulation or constancy of regulation I think is an important factor in the overall mm. creation of a stable, confident environment which spurs growth. Uh, now directly to so your so other question is, on tax, you, I think there a fear there's a that range of... Sorry. But just on regulation, Go ahead. just on regulation, Sangeeta, mm -hmm. uh, do you believe that there is over-regulation today? So I don't think it's a matter of over-regulation, Shireen, and this is a reflection of what we're hearing from FIKI, from various industry uh, across the board, not just FIKI, is that there is uh, new regulation coming at a time when business models were built based on the earlier regulation. So this change of regulation okay. without enough okay. dialogue, discussion, or kind of calculation mm. of the implications mm. of changes of regulation. I think media has been speaking about this a lot. Okay. The media sector has been affected by it. There's telecom who's talking about it. So there's a yes. range of things and regulation is definitely important. A clean, good governance, progressive economy is what all of us are looking for. Uh, and so sure. regulation is a very critical part of it. But it needs to go hand in hand with growth yeah. and appropriate practice. Yes, uh, it does. It does need to go uh, hand in hand with growth and, of course, with consultation. Uh, Sangeeta and gentlemen, we're going to take a very quick break, but continue our conversation on what Budget 2020 can do for the economy. Is it going to be a reset moment? That is the hope and the expectation. Privatization, strategic disinvestment, only about 17% believe that that is going to be the big theme. That's what CEOs believe. 17% CEOs believe that will be the big theme. We'll pick up on that and more when we return. Stay on with us. Bandhan Bank scales new heights with your support. We are humbled by the trust you place in us. Let's take this story of growth even further together. Bandhan Bank, aapka bhala sab ki bhalai. Hello, MG. Open some room. Pardon? When's the last time anyone said that to you? Please open some room. MG Hector. It's a human thing. Sir, socho mat. खुद का बिजनेस स्टार्ट करो जीरो कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट के साथ आई आई ट्रिपल ए टैबलेट इट्स ऑल यू नीड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग पीपल से यू कैन डू एनीथिंग सिटिंग एट होम आई से यू कैन आई से यू प्रोबेबली कैन इवन चेंज द वर्ल्ड जस्ट सिटिंग एट होम आई कैन सेव मोर देन सेवन थाउजेंड लीटर्स ऑफ वॉटर एवरी इयर जस्ट बाई सिंपली फिक्सिंग my kitchen's leaking tap make small changes in your life take shorter baths utilize the leftover ro water for daily household chores because if we save water today we save our tomorrow join the harpic news 18 mission pani campaign presented by harpic This isn't extravagant. Wait till you own your Kia Carnival. Pre-book now. Budget for a five trillion dollar economy with Fiki, powered by CNBC TV 18. Presented by Fiki. Check out, please. Rupees three thousand five twenty for your single room, sir. Rupees two thousand seven hundred and twenty for your single room. What if you use Trivago? You can scan hotel deals from major booking sites, so you can find a better deal for your hotel room. Try Trivago next time. Hotel Trivago. Whenever I've played, I played to win. Now I'm starting a new inning, and I need you on my team. Nominate a local store near you to start accepting digital payments. Play your part in India's cashless journey, and also you can earn a chance to play with me. So don't wait. Team Cashless India. Because some happiness is priceless. Mastercard Team Cashless India. 
to nominate, give a missed call on 901-686-1000 or log on to www.teamcashlessindia.com. Open. Access Bank में ये साइन सिर्फ दरवाजे पे नहीं लटकता. Actually, we wanted to save. इस उल्टे रखे फोन में भी झलकता है. जो कहता है बोल ये खुल के. We have a startup idea. For an online business now. हमारे कान हैं खुले. नजरिया है ओपन. Access Bank. दिल से ओपन. Thirty CEOs were polled by Dhruva Advisors for the CNBC TV18 Budget CEO poll, and we're discussing those findings with Dinesh Kanabar, the CEO of Dhruva Advisors, Sangeeta Reddy of Fiki, Vikram Kiloskar of CII, Ashok Vadva of Ambit, and Praveen Kadle, the chairman of Tata Capital. Uh, Ashok, I want to pick up on the theme that we were talking about. Nine, Seventeen percent CEOs believe that privatization and disinvestment will be the key policy thrust of the government. Now we talked about the fact that tax revenues have uh, lived, not lived up to expectations, in fact been far short of expectations and hence the focus on non-tax revenues. This budget we had an expectation of being able to get to a 1 lakh crore rupee number on disinvestment. We are going to fall short of that but the belief is that this is going to be the big thrust of budget 2020. What's your expectation? I would tend to agree with that Shirin. I mean if you look at our tax collections against uh, expected growth of 17 percent we are likely to grow by two percent on a year-on-year -year basis and that's easily explained because if your GDP instead of growing at six between six and seven percent is going to grow at under five percent yeah the expectation for next year at this yeah. stage appears to be more like 5.5 percent but we'll hear more from the finance minister then clearly you can't expect significant tax buoyancy your GST estimates were that by this time they would stabilize to around 1.3, 130 lakh, 1, 1 lakh 30,000 30, crores. Yeah. And you are, you are 1 kind lakh of, 30, yes. Yeah, you are currently around 1 lakh, 1 lakh 5,000 crores. Uh, and again, if the, if the yes. consumption is going to be muted uh, for the next fiscal year, uh, at least for a part of the year, then again, GST collections are not going to be significant. Uh, within that framework, mm. knowing the government's emphasis on fiscal prudence, the government will have to raise non-tax yeah. revenues. And I would argue that that divestment is a very, very good target uh, from, from a perspective of opportunity mm. to do a lot more than has been done thus far. I quite like the mm. idea the government is going around mm. on the Air India divestment, for example. They're coming up with creative solutions. Yeah. They're not yeah. hesitating to actually take what looks like a bold solution it's, mm. it's a very fair solution uh, separating mm. the debt out cleaning the company up and making an offer recognizing that the offer has to be attractive if the marketplace has to come and acquire one of yeah. these assets and I'd like to believe that if Air India is successful you will see a lot more happening in mm. that direction and and mm. and should that happen I think non-tax revenues led by by divestment could play a very important role in in revenue collect in uh, in the in the budget for 2020-2021. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, divestment and asset monetization could be uh, the non-tax revenue theme that the government will bet on. But I want to link back. Uh, the consensus on the panel as well as the survey that the big thrust is going to be on infrastructure spending. Now what could be the creative solutions for the government to try and address the infrastructure spending? Mr. Kadle, uh, once again there's talk about uh, revisiting a tax-free infrastructure bond. Uh, do you believe that that is the way to go? What would you like to see? Yeah, I think tax-free bonds one can certainly look at. But I must tell you that uh, if infrastructure is uh, going to be the thrust area, in the past we used to talk about the public-private participation or private sector participation. I don't think going forward, uh, at least in the next three to five years, looking at the most of the corporate houses uh, or the private sector, instead of saying yeah. corporate houses where the private sector is today, in terms of the uh, debt uh, leverage kind of a balance sheets that they have, mm -hmm. the government will have to really take yeah. uh, extra efforts in terms of putting the infrastructure investment in high gear. So tax-free bonds could be one thing. Mm. I think the, what you talked about, the, some kind of a fiscal uh, 
deficit uh, easing out of that uh, will also help from the point of view of infrastructure investment. Huge investments are required. There are also still uh, arrears of the contractors are yet to be released, not yet released. That also needs to be yeah. done. Yeah. So I think the infrastructure investment needs to be driven this time by the government through whether it is the policy mm. changes, whether through the fiscal measures, but I think it's something which is required to be done. So I would say government will have to really start yeah. right from the beginning. Uh, we'll have to start from the beginning and uh, perhaps tax-free bonds could be one of the solutions to look at. Uh, Mr. Kiloskar, uh, the boost to manufacturing, what is the expectation there? There's a talk that there could be, uh, you know, pharma parks and uh, policies around sort of creating large manufacturing zones specifically for industries like pharmaceuticals, etc. But there's also talk on hiking import duties or sensibly to give domestic manufacturing a leg up. Now, you know, there's concerns on how that's likely to play out as well. Your thoughts? Okay, I want to talk about a little bit on the infrastructure issue based on what our members' feedback is and then a little more sure. on manufacturing. On the infrastructure issue, the... Sure. The two points from our uh, members which I have been hearing is one is the payments which are stuck have to get paid fast. It's affecting mm. not only the mainline companies but also the sub suppliers and the SMEs and that can make a huge difference in, in reviving the economy. Second is some people have been discussing okay. you know, why not relook at the IDBI type of a development bank which is really there for long term mm. finance, long term infrastructural finance. Why not uh, uh, use perhaps some of the uh, deficit financing that you may do to set up, to, to put it into an equity of a development bank, which you can further leverage on a, on a much longer term basis. Because a lot of these projects and a lot of these NPAs you're talking of are running out because you're using short term kind of money for very long term projects. So, you know, why not look at that yeah. whole structure? Yeah. On the manufacturing side, hmm. you know, finally, what will make make in India work is a highly competitive manufacturing. Yeah. And what we've been asking for, and it's only mm. ma whether it's in manufacturing or it could be tourism or it could be, uh, you know, in the agri uh, food chain. We've asked for in any of all these areas, yeah. please put a common policy, uh, cha a policy link. Our biggest issue I feel for make in India, mm. and if I look at any of these big value chains that mm. are around, is that the policies or regulations are getting changed too fast and sometimes they're getting changed within the depreciation okay. time so you end up with an impairment rather than utilizing the full value of the asset so we need consistency in policy okay in for manufacturing con consistency in regulation uh, we have okay. also asked for con right. you know, uh, textile industry has a uh, textile ministry but some of the other, in some of the other mm. areas, like cars or like some of the other manufacturing areas, which are part of a global value yeah. chain, how yeah. do we integrate ourselves into a global mm. value chain? Is to is to break up mm. the value chains and uh, you know understand the breakup of the value chains in these industries. Look at each part of it, compare it with our competitors, and see how to make each part of it yeah. uh, uh, competitive globally. That's the way we can get manufacturing into India. In most cases, you'll find Indian factories are quite competitive. They're able to make within the factory gate yeah. a product which is quite competitive. So what is happening you know, before the mm. factory gate and after the factory gate? How to make that competitive as well? I think sure. we need a little more deeper study on the uh, value chain and the cost chain as well as on the okay. uh, uh, right. consistency in policy for manufacturing to happen. Consistency, uh, fair point. Consistency and predictability in policy. Uh, Sangeeta Reddy raised that issue as well. Consistency and predictability Sangeeta, in the policy. Top five asks, yeah. uh, absolutely. Sangeeta Reddy, the top five asks uh, uh, that you have from Budget 2020 on the back of the feedback that you've got in from Fiki's members uh, and, of course, uh, uh, you know what you've heard uh, so far. So, Shireen, the first one, like we said, was put money into the consumer's hands and for that, if you need to expand the fiscal deficit, please do so. Uh, uh, we should not worry too much about that. But at the same point, it needs to have a time-bound plan to repay. And that's why the dis disinvestment is a very important part of this overall strategy. 
that the disinvestment plan also should be time bound and target focused so that adequate money comes back into the government to repay or to use for other social sector. Yeah. So my first one is really, uh, or rather Fiki's first one, is to expand the fiscal deficit or find other creative means to put money into uh, consumers' hand. The second one is really about the okay. infrastructure, so for infrastructure, focus on infrastructure and if this means long term funds, whether it's bonds, other mechanisms or even lower interest rate uh, uh, international funding, but find methodologies to boost the infrastructure uh, sector many, many fold. I think the success which is happening in roads should be uh, expanded, escalated and moved to other sectors as well. The third significant one I think we're okay. talking about is a, a, a tremendous focus on agriculture. The fourth one is innovation, creativity, mm. IT and the businesses of the future. And the fifth is the overall climate. Sure. Let, let there be confidence, let there be positive <laughs> sentiment, let there be predictability of business. And uh, I think uh, a lot of the work sure. which has been happening in the last few weeks uh, from all the top offices is leading us in that direction. So we are looking forward to a positive budget. Yes, certainly. Expectation is building up. The Prime Minister himself uh, holding the pre-budget meetings and uh, hope is clearly in the air that this is going to be a budget that will uh, uh, kickstart uh, the engines of growth. Uh, Mr. Kanabar, outside of the budget, I just want to address uh, what the poll shows us about the mindset of corporate India and how they're approaching business over the next two to three years. We asked organizational changes that CEOs perceive uh, to take place over the next two, three years. Cost cutting and focusing on operations, 60%. Digitization and tech upgradation, 53%. M&A, 29%. Fundraising, 27%. Capacity expansion, 24%. And venturing overseas, 17%. That perhaps also explains uh, the risk appetite as well as what's happening with the global economy. But uh, Mr. Kanabar, uh, you know, explain what you're reading uh, from CEOs on this particular poll. In fact, this is the most telling slide of everything, if I may say so, Shirin. The fact that today people having regard to the way they see the economy at this point of time are willing to look at cost cut and sort of stay afloat and that's the highest proportion of what you see out there is, is very, very telling. Uh, look in contrast as to how many people are looking at uh, increasing the capacity and you will find the percentage to be abysmally low. So people are not really looking at this point of time to do anything beyond maintain and sustain the business and wait for the tide to turn. Uh, mm. Digitization obviously is something which is mm. very, very critical. Uh, uh, that's a part of the global phenomenon yeah. that's in some sense also a part of the cost cur curtailment issue. So in that sense, it goes hand in hand. But if the yeah. government has to change the mood, the thing that needs to happen is that mm. when we are sitting here next year to, to do this pre-budget survey, and if we say mm. that capacity utilization or mm. capacity expansion is going to be what 40, 50 percent people are looking at, that's when you would say really the mood has changed, yeah. the tide has changed, and the corporate India is looking yes. forward to what it needs to do. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Ashok Vadva, what would qualify this as a budget that addresses uh, growth and what could perhaps be spoilers? What, if anything, could spoil the mood? You know, uh, Do you anticipate any hike in, in the super rich uh, surcharge or do you believe that there could be any new taxes, any new levies? Well, given, given the optimistic uh, mood with which we all sit here and, of course, the mood around us, expectations from the budget, I, I personally don't think that there's going to be a significant mood spoiler in this budget. I think uh, one, of the, one of the upsides of the high tax that was levied last year on, under, the, under, the, under the title of super rich is that any potential, potential threat of a wealth tax or uh, inheritance tax which otherwise have looked like an uh, yeah. like like a threat, uh, I think that's abated at least for present. I think the government recognizes that if they have to translate this from a relatively low key mood into a more positive mood, it's important that they carry everybody. I love Justice uh, Chief Justice's statement 
uh, in the press the other day when he was addressing <laughs> the tribunal members that beyond a point, yes. tax becomes extremely unbearable even for the, 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 the rich and the high net worth <laughs> in the community. And I think that in many ways yes. sums up the sentiment at, at this point of time. Just two points I'd like to add, Shirin. One on infra, if you don't mind. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of money that has yes. flown in and we must give credit to the government for mm. the amount of money that has come through the new invit structure created by this government in infrastructure projects. Yeah. Uh, in my estimate, yeah. that amount over the mm -hmm. last 18 to 24 months is close to $20 billion. Yeah. And I dare say that if that right. policy continues to be maintained with consistency, there is no reason why we can't expect a similar mm. amount on an annual basis, which is a really large piece of amount, a capital. Yeah. And, and it, it really yeah. is yeah. providing funding to one of the most needed sectors, which is the infra, infra sector. Mm. And on the, on the real estate piece, right. the only, only request I would have for the government, something I have repeated in the past, please do not worry about how much tax concession is provided. Allow people to borrow money and give them 100% tax deduction should they buy property directly from the builder. It will allow you to move the completed huh. inventory huh. at a relatively low tax cost. Yeah. We can do the estimates very quickly. But it will allow the inventory to move. It will release sure. capital for the builders. It will allow them to service their loans with banks and NBFCs. Yeah. And you know what? They'll also get some savings to redeploy in businesses that are incomplete at this point of time. Okay, 100% tax deduction to get the unsold inventory moving. That uh, uh, could perhaps be a big ticket idea that the government takes forward. Uh, Praveen Kadle, Ashok Vadva, Dinesh Kanabar, Vikram Kiloskar and Sangeeta Reddy, many thanks for joining us uh, to take us through your expectations and also what you make of uh, the Dhruva Advisor CNBC TV 18 pre-budget CEO poll. As we pointed out, there is a lot riding on budget 2020. There's a lot riding every year, but the budget comes around with the laundry list of uh, demands that are made but this time particularly the hope is that the budget will bring forward a few disruptive ideas that will not just turn sentiment but will also ensure that the Indian economy moves back up to a growth rate of seven to eight percent thank you very much gentlemen and Sangeeta for joining us we'll see you again on the first of February to decode budget 2020 a quick break a lot more coming up don't go anywhere Presented by Dhruva Advisors.